Good morning, church. Uh, it's good to see everyone here this morning. Uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, I refuse to say that it's too early to say Merry Christmas. Uh, in fact, today is the official uh, opening of Christmas season. Uh, it's an Advent season, and depending on your church background, you might have celebrated growing up. You might have never heard of it. But the word Advent simply means the coming. It's from Latin, means the coming end. It's how through centuries, many churches, many Christians, they prepare themselves for the coming of the birth of Jesus, the celebration of the birth of Jesus, and they took their time. And I kind of like that. And as we pray this year about Christmas season, what God has for us, um, we wanted to do the same thing. We wanted to kind of slowly but get into the Christmas season way, way earlier than just on December uh, 24th and 25th. So we're going to start celebrating today. And we're going to start our Christmas uh, Advent series starting today. Uh, And as I believe Holy Spirit is going to work in our hearts and prepare us uh, for the joy and uh, and, and just the transformational things that happen on Christmas. And uh, I hope it's going to help us not just to focus so much on things, but to focus on what's really important. And uh, I believe you're going to enjoy it. Amen. I want to welcome again everyone. If you're first time here, especially, we're so glad you're here, and uh, I pray that you're blessed today. So today, um, I'm going to have a scripture for you out of Luke chapter 2. We're going to start studying Christmas story, and it's found in Luke chapter 2, uh, verses 10 through 14. Luke chapter 2, verses 10 through 14. And we took, um, we took four words out of this uh, small passage of scripture, and those are very powerful and very loaded w- words, and we're going to unwrap them. And we called the series Unwrapping Christmas because we want to unwrap what Christmas means for us. Not just, you know, thank God for, <coughs> for the manger, thank God for Joseph and, and the wise man and, and the shepherds. It's all good stuff, but we don't want to know what it means for me, right? We want to go through this Advent season celebrating the blessings and the gifts of Christmas and what it means for you and for me. So uh, we took these four four words, they're really powerful, and um, we're going to unwrap them. And today we're going to unwrap the word joy. That's why we put it up here, because I want it to be right in front of you. We're going to talk about joy. And so let's go to uh, Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 10. It says, then the angel, the background, this is the angel appearing to the shepherds, right? So you know the Christmas story. Uh, remember the Sunday school stuff from your Sunday school uh, uh, lesson, Christmas story. Angel appears to the shepherds. And this is what he tells them. He says, The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy. Good news of great joy. For behold, uh, joy for all the people. Which will be, uh, for there is born for you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in a swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a, with angel and multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward man. Let's bow our heads and pray. Jesus, we thank you so much that you came and you rescued us. And uh, we get to celebrate that. We get to rejoice in that. And we get to reap the benefits of your coming. And I pray as we enter this Advent season, as we start to study and to celebrate it, that the full gifts of Christmas, Lord, will be unwrapped before us, will be unwrapped before our lives, before our families. And we'll get to enjoy and soak in and breathe in deep the blessings, and the, and, and the glory, and the gift of this season. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So four words we're going to talk about this Advent season is first joy, then we're going to talk about peace. We're going to talk about God's good will to us, and we're going to talk about glory of God. So uh, simple, but profound and powerful, and we're going to start with joy, and we're going to start how joy of Christmas changed their life, and it still changes our life today. Now, when I'm going to talk about joy, I'm not talking about happiness. And I want to make a difference between joy and happiness, because some people believe that 
joy is kind of like happiness on steroids, you know? Maybe you met those people who are always happy and they're like, they always look like they, they have way too much coffee. They're excited and you have no idea what they're so excited about. That's not what I'm talking about. And as you read through the, through the scriptures, when you read about joy, we see so many commands. It says, rejoice always. And, and those are puzzling scriptures because they say, how in the world am I supposed to do that? And Apostle Paul says, rejoice in all circumstances. And all those great things that are written about joy, sometimes they just kind of pass over us because we treat joy as kind of thing that makes us happy. It's, you know, happy is when... I wake up and I have a great cup of coffee and, and it turned out just great, just the right amount of coffee beans and just the right amount of milk and right amount of sugar. I'm happy, right? But I can't say that I'm joyful because joy is deeper than that, right? You, can, you know, you, uh, you came to store and you found a great deal and an item you really wanted to buy. And you're so happy because you got a great deal, but I, I think it's a stretch to say that you were joyful, right? You see, I want to share with you four thoughts about joy and how it impacts and changes a life. And the first thought I want to share with you is the following, is that joy transcends circumstances. Joy transcends circumstances. You see, my happiness is always depending on circumstances, right? I mean, if everything is just right, if everything is aligned just correctly, I'm happy. If I get to do things that I like, I'm happy. If things go my way, I'm happy, you see. But when things don't go my way, I'm upset. You know, when somebody cuts off me off on the highway, I'm upset. When my coffee doesn't turn out well, I'm upset. When you have to wait in line a little bit too long to get your coffee, you see, happiness, it's linked to our circumstances. So if, if, if happiness is linked to our circumstances, we can't, and if joy would be happiness, then you couldn't rejoice always, but the Bible says rejoice always. And God wouldn't ask us to do something you don't have power to do, right? I mean, I'd say, hey, I'll be always joyful if you give me everything good every single day, right? So we confuse joy and happiness, and we miss the whole idea what's behind that, because when angel came to those shepherds, he says, listen, I'm bringing you a great news of great joy. You see, it was a very dark situation at the time. And they were living when they were occupied by Roman Empire. And being Israel occupied by Roman Empire, it's a little bit like, you know, you're living under ISIS. You know, you kind of couldn't do anything. Any sign of rebellion would be brutally put down. It was just, it was, it was unbearable. And it was happening for decades and centuries. And they were in bondage. And when somebody comes in and say, hey, we're going to be happy, you know, it wouldn't really connect with them. Because there was nothing to be happy about. Their lives were miserable. They were living under bondage of the occupier. They were, their lives were stolen from them. Their, their relatives were killed. Their, worship, their way of worshiping God was ripped out of them. It was a very dark, dark season when Christmas happened. And here angels come around and say, I'm bringing you news of great joy. And church, I want us to look at that and unwrap that. And unwrap it for your own life because joy is way more important than we think. Joy is not optional. Joy is not something that, hey, you know, if I get to have it, great, but I'm, I'm kind of fine without it. Joy is a fuel for your life. Without joy, we die. With joy, you can thrive in any circumstances. Listen, joy transcends circumstances. Do you know how I know that? Because Apostle Paul, when he wrote to us saying, rejoice in all circumstances, you know where he wrote it from? From jail. His feet were bound. His hands were bound. He was in miserable cold cell and he was old and he was he was his uh, health was fragile and and he's writing to church and all he's writing about is joy and he repeats the idea over and over and over again so it's definitely beyond the circumstances it's definitely not just expression of what is happening to you right now it's deeper than that it's more permanent it's it's a reality that's so sure and so unshakable that not even a difficult circumstance could shake that. 
And listen, God, church, God wants you to tap into that. Amen? It's available for us. That type of state of being, that type of mindset is available for us because it's more than just circumstances. Listen, if you came here today and your life was really bad, you're going through a really, really rough time, maybe you had a horrible week, guess what? I have a great news for you. You can have joy today. You can have joy today because joy is not depending on your day going great. We can unwrap what it's depending on, but it has nothing to do with circumstances. And if we look at joy this way, it's going to make sense. Joy transcends circumstances. You see, joy is not denial of, of joy is not also not denying what's happening around us. You know, some people think joy is just, I'm just not going to focus on bad things and I'm just going to ignore them and I'm going to go. You know, I had a friend who, uh, he would get sick, but he would just claim, I'm not sick, I'm fine, and he's barely getting up. He's in fever, he's coughing, I'm just fine. He's just living in denial. That's not joy. You see, joy is not just denying what's happening around you. Joy is being absolutely and fully present in your life, yet connected to the reality that supersedes your circumstances. That's joy. Now, so first thought, joy transcends circumstances. The second thought I want to share with you today is the following, is that joy is always relational. And uh, you might have never thought of joy this way, but if you actually read the scriptures, and if you study even right now brain science, they'll tell you the following, that the feeling of joy that, we, that our brain registers is actually the simplest way to describe it is being in the presence of somebody who is delighted to be with you. That's joy. Okay? So... By its own definition, you can't experience, experience joy just by always being yourself. It's a shared experience. And we see it in the Bible all over the place. Remember the parable of, of uh, lost sheep? The Bible says that the shepherd lost one of the 99. And we know it's a great story. It talks about a lost sinner. But this is how the, the, the parable ends. It says he comes back, finds the sheep, comes home. What does he tell his friends? Come rejoice with me because my sheep was lost now i found remember the lady who lost one of the very important coins from her jewelry box and bible says she swept the whole house and she found it and what did she do she went and invited her friends and said hey come rejoice with me i have a friend um who was blessed uh, with a good job and he he wanted to travel he went to one of the places he always dreamed of of seeing but he was he was still single. And I remember I, I, I called him up and said, hey, how was that place? How was it? I heard it was an awesome place to visit. He said, you know what? It was great, but it was painful. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, you know, I always dreamed of going there with, with, with somebody, and I came there alone. And as I sat there and looked at the beauty of the nature, and it hurt. You see, joy, if it's not shared, it's not really joy. Joy is always relational. Now, this is actually what Jesus was, this is what God was saying through Christmas story because remember in the Old Testament there is a prophecy that his name shall be called Emmanuel. You know what Emmanuel means? God with us. So what God is trying to do in the very first Christmas, what God was trying to do in an entire story of redemption is the following, is up until Christmas, up until Jesus came as a baby, nobody saw God. You couldn't see God. He was, he was a spirit. He is a spirit. You obviously can't see a spirit. And, and you study about Him and you go to temple, you hear teachings, but you cannot see God. And the relation with God was kind of difficult because... You worship him, and, and, and you, you know, he's, he's obviously very holy, and he's so separated from humanity. But Bible says that at one point, God's going to send his son, and his name will be called God with us. And you see, and so all of a sudden, you can relate to God as a father. And the only way you can relate to somebody as a father is by knowing their children. So Bible says at the right time, God sent his son. And when Jesus walked the earth, people saw the glory of God, and he was God with us. And that's why, listen, church, that's why our joy is rooted 
so deeply in your relationship with God. You see, I can wake up and I could have had a horrible week, I could have a horrible night, couldn't sleep, but when I come into the presence of God, and when I begin to pour out my heart before God, and when I can tell Him things that I couldn't tell to anyone, you know the result of that? Is joy. Because I've just spent, I've just spent time with somebody who delights in me. And even though with my mess and my brokenness, I came into his presence, and the Bible says he delights with us. You know, I love the scripture. I want to read to you. It's found in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. It says, The Lord your God in the middle of you is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will rest in love. He will joy over you with singing. I love that scripture. You know what it says? That God sings about you. That's how much he delights being with his children. Now listen, if you want to have joy in your heart, it's not going to be found in things. You can go to a store, you can buy the bigger TV that you didn't have and and you thought, hey, that thing's going to make me joyful. It'll bring you a momentary happiness, but that's about it. You see, things can never bring joy. Possessions can never bring joy. Joy is always relational. And it starts with God with us, Emmanuel, God who delights in me. God who I can tell anything and everything to, and He still delights in me. And that relationship with God is the foundation of joy, and that's why it transcends circumstances. Because you can be in a dark prison cell, but if you know God is with you, you know what you're going to have? You're going to have joy, right? You can be in a hospital bed, inflicted with severe disease, but if you know his God is right there next beside you in the same hospital bed, he's sitting right there with you, you know the result of it's going to be? It's going to be joy. You can go to work, you can, get, you can lose your job because of a layoff or whatever happened, but if you know somebody who delights in you, who is, Bible says he's mighty to save, and he delights over me with singing, that's joy. You see how permanent, how how transcends how transcendent the joy is. It goes beyond circumstances. It goes beyond what is happening around me. It's a reality that's far greater than my circumstances. It's a reality of being rooted and connected with God. Now, there is another thing that can make your joy grow bigger and better and deeper. It's not just having a relationship with God. It's having a relationship with His people. Amen? See, church, this is the power of church. We don't always connect these dots, but that's why coming to church together is so powerful. Because, you see, when you experience joy in God's presence, and I experience God in in, in His presence, and we both filled with joy, we can look at each other, and our, our, our eyes just meet, and there's joy. And the joy begins to multiply, because I know exactly what you're experiencing right now. I know exactly what you're going through, and you know exactly what I'm going through, and that experience is so powerful. I was reading an article last week about Christians in North Korea who are under severe threat of persecution, that if they were just to be found out they're going to church, they would be sent to labor camp for decades. And under the threat of that, they actually found the safest place to meet is to take out their boat. They live on the coast, particular Christians. They'll take their boats and they would go out a little bit out and they'll pretend like they're fishing. But they actually bring their hymn books with them and they whisper songs together. You see, not even a threat of jail and labor camp can stop them from coming together. Why? Listen, why is that? I remember as a kid, my dad was a persecuted pastor. He, he, he grew up uh, running from government because he was grew up in former Soviet Union. Pastor Michael here also. Great story of, of just of, of being persevering under persecution. And they'll tell you story after story. I remember as a seven-year-old kid, they would baptize at night. I, I, was, I was very little. I don't remember that much as my older siblings, but I remember my sister was being baptized at night because if you do it during the day, you can get arrested and fined and somebody can go to jail. So they would do it at night and Christians would wake up in the middle of dark night. As a kid, I loved it. You know, I'd say, hey, you didn't have to get to sleep. 
but people would go under the threat, listen, under the threat of losing a job, of being fined, going to jail, but they wanted to be together. That's the power, listen church, that's the power of God's family. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. You know, when, when you hear these stories, and when you talk about our excuses of why we could make it to church on Sunday, it just, you know, I, you know what I would love to do? Is I would love our Western Christian meet the North Korean Christian and explain to him why he didn't make it to church on Sunday. <laughs> he said, well, you know, my favorite game was on TV. He said, what? What? You know, can you imagine in the mind of that Christian how little that thing he says you, you skip being with people you love for that? Right? Or can you talk to Egyptian Christians who, who bombs go off to this day in their churches? They could be bombed any day and as they come to church, there could be a suicide bomber in the midst of them, yet under that threat they still go to church every Sunday. And you can tell them that, you know, I, I, I just couldn't, go, I couldn't wake up in the morning, you know. Right? Church, you see, joy is relational. And if you don't have joy, and you're always by yourself, that I, I can't help you. You can't experience joy just being stuck by yourself. That's why people who say, hey, I love God, but I don't like church. It's, it's an oxymoron. It's impossible. It's a miserable life. Because the joy is magnified through His people. Because when you come to church, when you're around people, listen, they're just as messed up as you are. They had just as bad a week as you did. They have so many problems that you probably can't even imagine because on Sundays they look great, but they go through stuff. They go through junk. They, they deal with difficulties. They deal with suffering and pain. But they, we can come together and we can say, God is good. Amen? God was good to me. And all of, a sudden, my, all of a sudden, my circumstances, my pain begins to fade in the background. And what comes is that state of mind that, listen, God has got me. I might be in jail, but God is, has, has me in His hands. Okay? My hands might be in, in shackles, but I'm in God's hands. I might be in difficult circumstances, but I'm in God's hands. My, 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 my health might be deteriorating, but I'm in God's hands. See, that's joy. And when I come and I begin to share that with you, you know, you know what's a powerful thing about joy? It's contagious. Right? When you're around, you know, we, everybody wants to be around joyful people because they lift up your spirit. Because, because you know, you, you can come and tell them your, your difficult circumstances and they're not brought down by that because guess what? They live in a different dimension. And they're like, listen, bro, I, I know with pain, I know, I know it's difficult, it's hard, but... God is good. You can still tap into the goodness of God in the midst of pain, in the midst of suffering. You can still know that God is good. You can still know that God delights in you. He writes songs about you. That's how much my, that's how much my God loves me. And when you tap into that, you can go through anything. You know, that's why, church, that's why Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Have you ever thought of that? That's why it says that. Because without joy, imagine going through pain without joy. It's hard. It's heartbreaking. It's difficult. It's, it's devastating. Because all you can see is your circumstances. All you see is your pain, your brokenness, your broken relationship, or what have you. But when you have joy, you can go through that stuff. That's why joy of the Lord is your strength. That's why joy is not optional. It's not something as a nice thing to have if you could get to that. We, have, we live, but that's fuel for life. That's what we live on. That's what your soul thrives on. Your soul, your heart was created to live in an environment of joy. And you can have that. Amen? Listen, Christmas made it possible. Because we serve Emmanuel. We serve God with us. He's with us. He's with you every single day of your time. He's with you. So joy is transcends circumstances. Joy is relational. Third thought I want to share with you is, I already say that, but joy is multiplied through fellowship. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26 says, If one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. 
If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. You see, you can multiply your joy. If, if you came this morning and your, low, your joy was just this, this low, you can bring it up to here just by coming to church. You might say, hey, I have no idea what pastor preached about. I forget his three thoughts or four points or whatever. But I left the church and my joy tank was filled. When you come to church and you realize that these are the people who have the capacity to connect me with God. And when I connect with them, I connect with God. I connect because I see through their life how they relate to God and I can imitate that. And I, can, and I can connect with God and all of a sudden I found my place. I found my footing again in the reality of joy. Joy is magnified through fellowship and through connection with other people. That's why church, um, I, I know I sound like a broken record, but that's why we have fellowship after church. You know, it's, it's not just because, we, you know, we like a nice coffee, Lord, praise God for coffee. You know, somebody said... It's God's way of telling us He loves us, and I agree with that. I say amen to that. <laughs> but listen, there's more than that. There's more than that. If you, if you, if you kind of come to church and you just go, and as, when, as the church is over, you kind of go on the way out, you never enter that room, you're missing like this much of joy. <laughs> okay? I mean, it's, it's, it's great we come together and we sing and, and, and you listen to the message, thank God, forget, but... You're missing this huge chunk. You're missing the icing on a cake. Right? Because you can talk to people and listen, and I know some people are, are not easy to talk to. Some people are just plain weird. That's fine. We can be weird together, right? We can just say, hey, you know, I have no idea what you're saying, but I'm happy to be with you. Here's a cup of coffee. I, I'm just so happy to see you, right? So listen, if you haven't tried that, can I ask you to try that? Just after church today, come to the fellowship hall and just, just hang around. Or you can do even better things. You can come up to somebody you never talked to and say, hey, I know you saw me and I saw you. We have no idea what each other's names are. But, you know, I'm Peter and you are. And, hey, awesome. I'm so glad to see you. Now, listen, just a small exercise. Watch it. How it's going to increase your joy. It's going to, because joy is relational. Because joy is magnified, it's multiplied through fellowship, through connection to other people. Church, that's why we have midweek connect groups. It's not because we just want to feed people more information. Oh yes, Bible study is great, but that's not number one point of our connect groups. Did you know that? That's why we don't call it Bible study. We call it a connect group because it's a place to connect. Because, I don't know about you, but I'm, by the time Thursday or Wednesday comes around, I need a pickup. I need a little bit of joy infusion in me. I need another injection of joy. I want to be around people who love God. And so when, when, when we come together in the connect group and, and sometimes we just share life. We just, we'll just put away the, the studies, the materials, say, hey, what God is doing in your life? And somebody's going to share testimony how God answered their prayer. And somebody's going to say, listen, I'm dealing through a really hard time right now. But no matter what share there, through their shared connection, joy is magnified. Joy is growing. And listen, I, you know, if you're not part of Connect Group, you're missing out this much. You know? <laughs> like there is no way I can tell you how much. You're just missing out. You are. Because Sunday is not enough. It's not enough for me. It's not enough for a lot. It's not enough. So if you're not part of a connect group, please come talk to me. Talk to Pastor Mike Levin better. He runs connect groups. He'll connect you. He'll plug you in so you can be together with people who love God. And listen, are you going to like those people? Some you will, some you won't. Are you going to like their food? Some you will, some you won't. But it makes no difference. Listen, they love God and you love God. That's all that matters. You can come together and through fellowship and sharing life together, Listen, you're tapping into the reality of joy that's deeper than your circumstances. Because if you're only going through, oh, I got to go to work, I got to pay my bills, I got to take my kids to school, I got to go to the hospital, I got, if you're only living through that, it's kind of like a you know, hamster running on a, on a wheel. There is no end to it. There is no joy in it. It's killing joy. You need to get out of that. You need to connect with people who, I'm not saying that people are going to connect are like super hyper enjoy or whatever. It doesn't have to be that. But they love God. Okay? And just your connection with people who love God will increase your joy. It will grow your capacity of experiencing God and experience joy. Amen? Amen. 
Last thought I want to share with you, we're going to pray. So joy transcends circumstances. Joy is always relational. Joy is multiplied through fellowship. The last thing that's really important, joy is fuel for transformation. Joy is fuel for transformation. Do you know that we only change, I'm talking about permanent change. I'm not talking about I'm going to change for you so you will get off my case for a day. I'm talking about permanent change. We only change in the presence of joy. I don't know if you ever thought of it like that, but that's actually, it's, it's, it's taught in the Bible and it's proven by science. You know, the Bible says there was the kindness of God that led us to repentance, right? It wasn't God's anger that, that brought you to church. It wasn't God's this amazing, awesome, it was God's goodness. It was God's kindness. It was only that, that I knew that I'm, I'm an awful sinner, but I have a, such an awesome and loving God, and even though I'm an awful sinner, He can still love me. That fact alone brought me to repentance. And listen, and the very same reality of joy can bring transformation in your life. Listen, you know what? That's why nagging never works. Did you know that? Anybody who's married, can I ask you, have you ever changed your spouse by nagging? It's not going to happen. It's impossible. It doesn't work like that. So please stop. Just might as well, you know, you're, gonna, you're just going to just gonna save yourself so much pain because nagging never works. It doesn't change people. It gets people on defensive. They might stop that activity for a day or two to make you happier, but they'll just gonna go right back to it. You know, can I show you a way to change to be changed and to actually influence other people to change it's called joy it's actually proven by science you know what they realize is they realize is that when we are in the, in the presence of people who are happy to see us you know what happens in our brain a brain begins to build new connections it literally activates new neurons that, and it begins new pathways so your life experience is enhanced and that's why things like accountability group based just on shame never works. It has to be built on joy. It has to be built around people who say, listen, I know you're going through a difficult time. I know you're going through addiction, but I'm still going to love you. I'm still going to be right here. I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to hold you. I'm gonna, I'm, we're going to get through this together. When you have people like that in your life, you can change. When your group around you is only built on shame and guilt, it's never going to change. Shame doesn't change people. Guilt doesn't change people. Joy changes people. Again, that's why joy of the Lord is your strength. That's why, listen, if you're struggling with habit or you're struggling with sin in your life, thank God for discipline. Discipline alone is not going to help you. You need bigger reality than that. The reality is connected with God. When you come into His presence, say, God, I just need to feel your delight in me. And when the delight God feels and sings over you is bigger than that addiction you're struggling with, is, is bigger than the sin you're dealing with, the, the, the allure of sin and the allure of addiction is going to fade away compared to just the greatness of God's love and God's delight over people. Joy is fuel for transformation. If you learn to come back to joy, if you learn to connect with God through, in joy, if you learn to connect with God's people in joy, you're going to be on a path of restoration, transformation, healing, because that's the atmosphere that fosters healing, that fosters transformation, and fosters reconciliation, restoration of all things. Listen, joy is not optional. As we're going to go through this Christmas season, I, you know, I wish I could say, hey, you know, if you can be happy about something, just try to be happy. That's not about that. It's about going through life. It's about surviving. It's about thriving. And I don't know about you, like, I don't want to go through life like a lemon. I want to be joyful. I want to be filled with life. I want to be filled with, with joy. And this Christmas season, I want to connect with other people. And I want to bless somebody else. through joy and when you are filled with joy listen you can go through anything in life remember you know what bible says that for the joy set before him jesus did what endured the cross 
Think about that for a second. You know what enabled Jesus to go through the cross? It wasn't his grit. It wasn't that he was such an awesome, awesome macho man. He saw joy. He saw joy of you being ripped out of hell and transferred into heaven. He saw joy of seeing somebody's marriage that's so broken and so hopeless restored. He saw joy of somebody who's bound in addictions, bound in sin, bound in darkness, being restored and rescued. And the joy of that enabled him to go on the cross and suffer and die because of joy. Listen, if you have joy, you'll go through anything. If you, you know, no matter what, what holds this week, if I have joy in my heart, who cares? Who cares? Because I'm connected to a reality that's eternal, to a reality that supersedes my circumstances, that supersedes even this world. It's tapped into heaven. Do you know that joy is the atmosphere of heaven? When you're gonna, when you're gonna close your eyes here, when you're gonna open your eyes in heaven, when you're going to breathe in, you're going to breathe in pure joy. And listen, God allowed us to feel it here. God allowed us to tap into it right here. You don't have to wait till heaven. You don't have to wait till all your circumstances are perfectly happy and everything is perfectly right. You can have joy right now, today. No matter what happens in your life, you can have it right now by connecting with God and connecting with other people. And your joy levels will just rise and you will go through life just so much happier person because of God with us. Emmanuel, the joy is available to you and to me. You know, that's why uh, Scripture says in Romans chapter 14, verse 17, that the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You know what Apostle Paul is saying here? Listen, Stop going to fridge and getting another pizza slice to make you happy. Okay? Stop reaching for that other slice of cake. It's, yes, it's going to make you happy for just a little second, but there's bigger things. God is offering you better things. God is not, God is not offering you an, a, a, a temporary relief. God is offering you a permanent solution. That solution is joy. That solution is available to you and to me right now. Amen? Let's be on our feet. We're going to pray right now. Father, I thank you for Emmanuel. I thank you for God with us. I thank you that though the sorrow may last for the night, the joy comes in the morning. And I pray right now that, uh, the dawn, that just the, the rise of morning will come over our souls right now. Lord, maybe somebody spiritually speaking right now in the night, God, I pray for the sunrise. I pray for the sun of righteousness to rise over their lives, God. And healing to come in in its rays, God. And I pray for joy, God. Oh, God, I pray for joy to flood our souls. I'm praying over every heart right now, every soul, burdened, broken, filled with worries and, and just the weight of life, God. This morning, Father, we came to, to, to an oasis of joy came to a place where we can recharge our joy. We can refill our tanks with pure joy of your presence. Your word says, in your presence there is fullness of joy, God. Oh yes, God. And we, when we, Lord, when we just breathe in your presence, maybe we're not, we don't have words to say, we don't have songs to sing, we don't have elaborate prayers to pray, God, but when we just stand in your presence, your word says, your presence is filled with fullness of joy. And Lord, this remaining few minutes of our service this morning, we want to just breathe that in right now, God. We want to just breathe that in. Enter our soul, not with our physical lungs, Lord, but with the lungs of our spirit. We want to breathe in a deep, refreshing breath of joy of your presence. Just knowing that you're with us, that you are Emmanuel, that you are with me right now, that you are in the seat right next to me, that you're embracing me, that you delight in me, that you rejoice over me with singing. That's enough, God. That's all I need. 
That's all I need, God. And I pray right now, just right now, just release of your joy over every heart right now, God. Joy, Father. Your presence, the presence of God, the presence of Emmanuel, God with me right now, in this moment, in the midst of my circumstances, no matter what happens to me, Jesus, I thank you that you're with me. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for that deep connection. If you can just do something for me right now as a symbol, it might, might sound silly to you, but just take a deep breath. And as your lungs take a fill with a deep breath, just believe for your spirit to, to breathe into the atmosphere of heaven. Let's just do it together. Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. Listen. You will go through it. You will overcome. You will succeed. God is good in your life. And he'll never going to forsake you. That's enough. Amen. God bless you. We have fellowship hope.